Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. We're gonna jump into some pro revenge. Our first story today comes to us from Interesting Spite 8260. All she had to do was nothing. Let's jump right in. I am a professional attorney wrangler for a big legal firm. If you've watched Suits, I'm Donna. If she was wound tighter than a child's music box, as a legal admin, I have to keep a tremendous amount of information straight. Every county and every U.S. state has their own court system, their own rules, and their own idiosyncrasies. I have five attorneys on my team. Despite the TV shows, it's pretty unusual for a lawyer to have a special secretary all their own unless they are very important. So five is a solid number. Because of the nameless death that took over the world last year, a secretary that left in January 2020 has not been replaced yet, and I've been babysitting one of the partners, Bingley, in the meantime. It's been a fun learning opportunity, as Bingley works for an entirely different region and type of law than the rest of my team. Also, he has a case where a truck exploded, was empty, which is awesome. Story, my manager, Lady Catherine, is the worst. You know the type, she plays favorites, her best love word is no, she must be involved in every conversation because she is just that important and necessary. We don't get along because I am a stubborn know-it-all who's been proven right a few too many times. Highlights include forbidding me from using the same resources other admins had access to on her orders, including backup admins when my workload was too big, and then denying my overtime requests. I literally had no way to do my job some days. It's worth noting that the reason Bingley's secretary left was specifically because of Lady Catherine. In fact, Four additional admins quit over the year explicitly because of her. Anyway, at this point, I'd been working with Bingley for almost a year. It was November 2020, and we'd settled into a pretty good routine. I'd gotten used to filing pleadings in a different state, and no longer needed to double-check all my work for nuance. Because law still operates in the Stone Ages, a few U.S. states still require hard copy filing. Anything we want the judge to read has to be sent by actual mail, on actual paper, to arrive in the judge's actual hands. It's a pain. Most states let you file electronically, but whatever. Bingley mostly only has cases in one of the hard copy states. Lady Catherine, in her excessive wisdom, butted in uninvited and instructed me to include a cover letter when mailing a new filing. This confused me, as I had been filing for almost a year, and no one, including the admin who originally trained me, had mentioned a cover letter. I told her this, and she basically told me to suck it up. I called the court admin to make sure I wasn't crazy and that I hadn't ruined a year's worth of filings, and the court admin literally laughed and said to please not include a cover letter ever. So I didn't. Imagine my surprise when Lady Catherine called me, writing me up for insubordination. Even knowing the court rules and the judge and the court admin explicitly said to not send a damn letter, she was right because she is always right. And I am, and I quote, a disrespectful little crap and she was tired of me. A warning went into my employee file pending disciplinary measures. The next day, she emailed my team telling them to reduce my score on my yearly review as she knew I had been rated too highly for what my abilities really are. It felt to me like she was preparing to fire me by creating a history of poor performance. Well, if you're so tired of me, Madame Manager, I can leave. Within a week of looking, I found a new position. Now, here's the issue. I effing love my team. This is the best work team I've ever been on. We take each other seriously, and we genuinely love each other. A lot of times, admins get pushed around because we don't have fancy degrees, but not here. Calling in to quit, I cried. I cried a lot. I cried to the point that one of the partners, Bennett, asked if I wanted a counteroffer. I said no, because that wouldn't solve anything. He asked what I meant. I told him. I told him about the write-up. I told him how she was trying to falsify my employee review after it had been submitted. I told him the reason five admins had left. I told him about how I wasn't allowed to ask for help. At this point, I had given myself hiccups from weeping, and one of the partners on my team, Gardner, was calling him, asking if he and his workload were the reasons I was leaving. So, Bennett let me go do other things, like day drink and create a shrine out of legal forms. 
I thought it was the end of it until a friend in another office, Charlotte, called me asking WTF was I doing? She doesn't have time to train someone into being the new me, and I was the only admin she actually trusts in my office, so why was I leaving her all alone? I told her, and she told Gardner, and together they plotted. First, Charlotte is the manager in her office, so she is on equal footing with Lady Catherine. They also report to the same person. Charlotte called the district manager and told him that Lady Catherine was driving admins away, and that the most recent quitter, me, was the only person who knows how to do a lot of the work on my teams, and my loss was a serious blow. Apparently, this is true, which is both heartwarming and terrifying. Meanwhile, Gardner called up a fellow partner and told her that his world would collapse in on itself if I left. He would go to the nearest bridge and jump off it, which would be pretty impressive in a landlocked state. They had to do something. I got a call the next day from Bennett, saying they had a counteroffer they were really hoping I'd take. Basically, instead of Lady Catherine, I would report directly to Gardner. Lady Catherine would be forbidden from interfering with me without first asking Gardner for his permission. This solved the issue and I got to stay with my team, so I happily accepted. I thought the debacle was over. The debacle was not over. Unbeknownst to me, after looking at the evidence, exit interviews, emails, memos, Bennett put Lady Catherine on a performance improvement plan, and she did not get an end-of-the-year bonus, or raise. Turns out, I had been absolutely correct. Lady Catherine's behavior and treatment had been the explicit cause that six secretaries quit in less than a year. I got a call last week from Charlotte. I figured she wanted to gossip about coworkers or rant about how a shared client is a big old headache, but it was actually to give me a heads up. Lady Catherine had been stripped of her management duties. I no longer had any contact with her, which was great, but it also meant I didn't see that her behavior had actually doubled down on the admins, unfortunate enough to still be under her thumb. She had missed every single one of the benchmarks on her performance improvement plan. Charlotte had called me to ask my opinion on who should be the new manager, as I knew everyone, and she was helping cover some things as an outside manager. Now, I know some of you are thinking, yes, become the manager and fire Lady Catherine. But I am not a sadist. I want to stay on my team and do what I do best, which is being a cheerfully annoying, respectful little crap. I told her one of the more senior admins would probably need some guidance, but would be amazing at it. No one has to deal with Lady Catherine anymore. She is now a mere paralegal and not anyone's manager at all. If she had just left me alone and not interfered where she wasn't needed, none of this would have happened. All she had to do was nothing. Underneath this story, OP added an edit. It says, Thank you so much for the gold and silver. I'm super excited and honored, but don't waste your actual money on my silly story. 1. Why wasn't Lady Catherine fired? Answer, I have no idea. My best guess is she's really great at another part of her job or has a valuable qualification. That or she's extorting someone. I will absolutely update if I find out for certain. 2. There are bridges in landlocked states. Answer, it's just a silly throwaway joke, but I'm from the San Francisco area originally. When I say bridge, I think Golden Gate, which does go over the ocean. I'm new to the middle part of the US, and I'm still learning your weird, claustrophobic topography. 3. Where are Bennett's managerial skills here? Answer, look, I picked Bennett as a name for a reason. He's a great dude, super smart and funny, but he tends to ignore problems instead of solve them. 4. Wait, how many secretaries quit? Do you know how numbers work? Answer, I absolutely do not. Thank you for asking. My math does check out here though. Four nameless secretaries, plus Bingley's former secretary, plus me. I stayed but also quit. I'm a conundrum. Six. Six pissed off admins. Ha ha ha. Bennett, if you're reading this, this is why I turned down the accounting duties. Five. So, who actually got revenge here? Answer, Charlotte, in my opinion. I wasn't sure what Reddit to post this to, but pro-revenge is my favorite, so I tried it out. I briefly chatted with a mod who agreed, so here it is. Six. Pride and prejudice. Answer, Austin was a genius and you can't convince me otherwise. One thing people don't realize is that the administrative staff really rule the roost, even if another person signs the checks. So treat them well, and they'll treat you well. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our second story today comes to us from you... Um, no, I'm just not gonna try that. Don't mess with Sandra. Let's jump right in. 
This tale was told to me as a warning when I started on my first post-college job. I am relating it exactly as it was told to me. This occurred in the early 80s, so those of you who have grown up with the internet may not understand how we did things in the olden days. There were no smartphone apps to show cue codes for airline tickets. They were paper with red carbon mess. Reservations were done by phone. It was primitive by today's standards. Players, names have changed of course, Sandra, super sweet secretary loved by all, true, I worked with her, she was amazing, Fred, Sandra's boss, Tom, local VP, Big Shot, an incoming senior manager from back east, Al, lead engineer on the team. This occurred in Salt Lake City, which if you don't know, family was a huge part of the culture. Even at work, family members took precedence and local management knew this and allowed for it. Well, Big Shot's office minions noticed some slight irregularities in time cards like days off without pre-approved vacation requests, so he got himself transferred to the Salt Lake City office to straighten things out. Naturally, he was quickly hated. One morning, Sandra got a call. Her daughter was unexpectedly in town and wanted to have lunch. Naturally, Fred and Tom said okay, but then Big Shot stuck his nose in. Rather than just say no, he dropped a travel request on Sandra's desk and it had to be done because he expected to fly out that afternoon. Sandra was heartbroken that she wouldn't get to see her daughter, but she had her work responsibilities. Stopping by to drop off some paperwork, Al noticed that Sandra looked a little down, a huge change from her normal chipper mood. He naturally asked why, and Sandra explained. Al told her, he had no authority by the way, to go have lunch and we'll take care of it. Big Shot got his travel packet, got on the plane that afternoon, and flew off to his meeting. That's when things started to go wrong. The rental car reservation was invalid, and there were no cars available at any of the agencies. All had a hold on them pending confirmation from some big clients. So, Big Shot ended up getting a rent a wreck For those too young or not in the US, there really was a discount auto rental agency by that name. Quality was not job number one. When Big Shot got to the hotel, he found that his reservation was no good. He had to wait around until after the tentative reservations expired, which was after 6 p.m. Getting suspicious, Big Shot looked at his tickets and found they were one way. He had no flight home. The next morning, Tom flew in to join him, and to say Big Shot was incensed was probably an understatement. He gave Big Shot a packet that was marked extremely urgent that had been left on his desk with a note to take it to Big Shot. It was Big Shot's return ticket. On the way back, Big Shot stopped by the corporate office and got a very senior exec to come with him because of some very serious personnel problems. The next morning, Big Shot led the senior exec and Tom into a meeting with all of Fred's department and began publicly berating Sandra for incompetence and so on. When he got to the part about the tickets, Fred interrupted and told the senior exec that Sandra couldn't have done that. She was on approved time off having lunch with her daughter. This raised the senior exec's eyebrows and got Big Shot even angrier. The senior exec said if Sandra didn't mess up the tickets, who did? Fred stepped forward, then Al, and one by one, every single member of Fred's team stepped forward to take responsibility to protect Sandra from Big Shot's wrath. Tom and the senior exec knew instantly what had happened. Everyone on Fred's team had burned up the phones making tentative reservations for rental cars and hotel rooms, leaving Big Shot stuck with worthless reservations and no alternatives. Within the hour, Big Shot's desk was empty and his badge had been turned in. The senior exec stuck around to get to know the team. He was very impressed with how the whole team stuck together and protected their own. After he finished the tale, the engineer said bluntly, Don't mess with Sandra. We love her, and we will make you pay if you upset her. Message received loud and clear. As I worked with Fred's team, I got to understand why everyone loved Sandra. She was an absolute gem in the organization. Efficient, super friendly, just an all-around wonderful person. This OP also added an edit at the end. It says, Addendum. I appreciate all the kind words and awards. Allow me to clarify a point or two. Note, everything is from what I was told because I wasn't there. So I apologize for any possibly incorrect inferences I have made from the tale. From what was said, Big Shot was not well liked. He had a strict by the book mentality and was a bully. Tom and Fred had told Sandra it was okay to take a long lunch with her daughter. 
Big Shot didn't like that because it didn't meet the weak advance approval policy. Just a guess, but it's possible he got his panties in a bunch because the request went over his head too. He couldn't stop Sandra, but he could bully her and make her miss the lunch meeting because he didn't like the informality of approval in the SLC branch. He might have intended to demonstrate that he was Fred's superior and people needed to get his approval and possibly to instill a little fear didn't work out so well for him. Addendum 2. Some of the respondents apparently aren't reading the comments, so let me clarify for those who want to be a contrarian or a jackbutt. From the way I was told the story, Big Shot was not removed from his job for doing his job. Sandra had permission from Big Shot's boss. That explained in several comments below. His job did not include authority to override his boss's decision. He was removed for trying to bully Sandra, who she had permission. He was not doing his job. Everybody hates group projects, but when you can come together for a common good, wonderful things can happen. Thank you to both OPs for posting their stories in the Pro Revenge subreddit. They are linked in the description down below. Please go check them out. Check out one of these other videos. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories.